you know, we go back 40 years. Um, I think we first started walk, working um, uh, with Bert Bernice Cohen in the early 80s. It's now in the early 21s, so that makes it 40 years. Uh, we've shared a lot together. Uh, just being John Samet's deputy chairs was truly a challenge. And, you know, I think I learned a lot from you in terms of patience and just putting one foot in for the other, and it's all been a good, uh, a good trip. Yep, we get tired. And, uh, but you've had an incredible impact on the department and on the field of genetic epi. And I would just say that our, our friendship has been uh, a really positive feature of our time here at Hopkins. So enjoy the glide path to retirement and we wish you all the best. Hello, I'm John Samet. I was chair of the Department of Epidemiology at Hopkins from 1994 through 2008 and had the opportunity to work with Terry Beatty. Of course, I knew Terry from long before because of our shared interest in pulmonary disease. Terry is a key figure in the history of the Department of Epidemiology. She was the bridge between Abe Lilienfeld and Bernice Cohen, really the start of uh, genetic epidemiology at Hopkins and in truth, uh, part of the start of genetic epidemiology more broadly, and the department today with a host of uh, genetic epidemiologists working on a variety of problems. Terry's legacy is abundant. It includes a broad body of science. I'd single out her work on clefts and the demonstration of the critical role of tobacco smoke and causing uh, clefting and also the many people who she has trained. Many of you who are listening are part of that legacy. So looking back, uh, Terry was a key figure in the uh, department, a key contributor to science and a key mentor. Most importantly, also, she joined me uh, in leadership of the department, taking on the role of uh, Vice Chair, providing guidance and mentorship to a broad range of faculty in her quiet uh, but direct and compelling uh, way. She was a great colleague and many times confronted by a tough challenge as chair, I would wander down the hall to uh, speak with Terry, close the door and talk over uh, challenging uh, issues. So I'm delighted to wish uh, a colleague whom I worked with for many years uh, good luck in this uh, next uh, next phase and uh, enjoy uh, the years uh, years to come. Uh, perhaps uh, able to do many new things uh, without being an academician. Thank you, Terry. Hey, Terry. Goodness, is this time here already? Um, I'm in denial, but lucky for me. You and I went from being advisor, students, to being collaborators, peers, and good friends. So I get to say bon voyage, but not farewell. Um, your legacy as a teacher, it's incredible. And I only hope I can muster half that dignity, half the dedication, but all of your polka face calm as I go on to train the next generation of genetic epidemiologists. Um, I want to thank you especially for marking up all of my drafts in red pen. You told me when you handed over my first dissertation draft, feel good, Russica. It's not as marked up as it could be. Um, I want to add that you had a red pen mark on every page, if not every paragraph. Um, however, you taught me the art of writing science, and every time I tell my own trainees that good scientific writing is telling a compelling story in black and white, I channel you, Terry. So now go make some incredible memories in Technicolor in this next stage. I want to see them all, so stay in touch and bon voyage. Hi, Terry, it's Kathleen, um, wishing you all the best in this new chapter of your life. Um, 
Terry, I can never begin to thank you for all that you've done for me over the years since I came to Hopkins. Oh my God, 93. Um, you've been a mentor, a confidant, um, a dear friend, a scuba diving buddy. Um, I just can never thank and you. And I am Aravinda Chakravarti. And uh, I'm speaking to you this morning to try and draw everybody's attention to really the superb scholarship and work of Professor Terry Beatty. So Terry, as you and I know, we've known each other from a very long time. We first met at a meeting of the Genetic Society of America when both of us were trainees, PhD trainees. Um, you were a PhD student with Peter Smouse, if I remember, and I was one with Masato Shine, and we had our posters at the genetics meeting opposite one another. That's how I came to uh, know you and know your work. So that's a very long time ago, over 40 years, and let's not count. And this is to say that I've sort of followed your work not only the methodological stuff, but really over the last 20 years, your persistent efforts in trying to understand the genetics of cleft lip and palate. This has been a classical problem in human genetics. And really, thanks to your efforts, we know much, much more than we did 20 years ago as to how this multifactorial disorder really comes about. Um, you've always been a quiet person, unlike me, who's just quite loud, but I just want you to know, as you move into what I hear is semi-retirement, that you and your work are valued very highly, at least by my generation of geneticists, that you've made fabulous contributions to the field of human genetics. You've been, as we found out recently from a student we've had in common, or rather than you've mentored, Michael Cho, that you are a tremendous advocate for graduate students and to make sure that they do their work with high quality and that they do that with time. I don't know that I would have had the full patience that you've demonstrated showing the great commitment to not only your personal scholarship, but to that of the next generation of trainees. I wish you great health. I wish you happiness. And I really want you to know that the community really recognize, recognizes your efforts. Thank you and have a great semi-retirement. Terry, you are an inspiration in everything you do in your research, in your mentoring, and in your education. It is a privilege and an honor to be around you. And, and really for me, for so many years. And so I wanted to share a couple of the pearls of wisdom that you've given me over the years. The first is, anytime you write an abstract, you really should be prepared with a paper to follow immediately. But there's no reason you should be writing abstracts if you're not ready to write that paper. And the second really follows suit with that, which is that Many a career can be built on a series of small papers that you don't have to publish in the big journals. And if you do, that's wonderful. But if you don't, it's your obligation to science and to yourself to get the work out that you're doing, that you need to, that's your job. And the final one is the one that you often share with people considering a career in our field or considering coming to Hopkins in some capacity. And you say that we're all in a boat and the boat is sinking. And I often think to myself, that's really not so inspirational, but perhaps it is because your message is it's thinking, but we're all in it together. And if we're in it together, we can bail ourselves out. We can make it to shore. We can get things done. And that's really the truth. You've given us this academic home where we're able to work together. You've given it to the larger community of genetic epidemiology as well. And I thank you because without it, I'm not sure where we'd all be. It's not a game of being individual in a boat. It's about being in it together. And then finally, Terry, really on a personal note, your honesty and integrity is just so unbelievable. And you have given me insight at such pivotal moments in my life and in my career. 
that I, I needed. I needed to hear those words. And it really all started when I came to you and told you I wanted to work on genetics and infectious disease as an MPH and then as an early doctoral student. And you looked at me and you said, Priya, really? Couldn't you just pick heart disease or cancer? That would be a lot easier. And I needed to hear those words. I needed to hear that it was gonna be tough because that allowed me to double down and to forge the path that I needed to forge. And I knew you were interested in the topic as well. And you were still willing to say that, that, it, that you weren't gonna paint me a rosy picture of how it was gonna be, but you were gonna tell me the truth. And you've done it just for so many people in so many ways. You've told us the things that we need to hear. So now let me tell you something that you need to hear. You are loved, you are beloved, and really you have done such amazing work. And we are so lucky to have you as a part of everything we do. We will miss you, but we know you'll only be a phone call away. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Congratulations on your retirement. Uh, I'm excited for you and I'm planning to follow your example and do the same thing in just about a year from now. Um, so one of the questions we've been asked to address is what's an important lesson you've learned from Terry Beatty? And you know, we've been colleagues and friends a long time, but one lesson that stands out is learning from you how to be a great collaborator, because you really are one. Uh, we've collaborated on our CLEF studies for many years, and you just do a fabulous job. You're one of my favorite people to work with. Um, then the next question was, what's your favorite memory with Terry Beatty? Well, sorry, I have too many favorite memories to talk about here, but I'll hit a few highlights. Um, we have taught together in classes, which has been great. We have co-mentored wonderful students who now are the scientific leaders who are going to carry the ball forward in the world of research as we retire. Uh, so that's one of my particular favorite memories with you. But, you know, we also have lots of great memories as friends. Our fun times, having dinners together, crab cakes. Yum. <laughs> walking on the trail together, walking in my neighborhood during the pandemic, just chatting about life, kids, grandkids, etc. So we've enjoyed our friendship for a long time. And of course, your retirement is not going to stop that. Uh, I very much hope that Alec and I'll get down to visit you sometime uh, when we're in Florida. So have a wonderful time, enjoy your retirement, and uh, we will continue being friends and having fun together uh, as life goes on. Take care, bye. It is a privilege to be part of your uh, retirement celebration today and really a privilege to have benefited from your mentorship um, over the past 25 years and to have you as a colleague um, as well. Really, when I think back, um, of all the wonderful advice you've given me at, at all times. I always knew um, that anytime I was stuck, whether it was life, work, um, I could come to your office and ask for advice and you would tell me um, not always what I wanted to hear, but what I needed to hear. Um, early on when I was pulling together my thesis proposal, um, one of my initial proposals, you went and you said, well, you know, you could do that, but it's kind of boring. And you are absolutely right. I went back, um, it was on a Friday. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I was depressed all weekend. Over the next week, I really sat and thought about it. Um, and eventually kind of pulled together, developed a new topic um, in pancreatic cancer. And 25 years later, I'm still studying that. So really, um, giving me advice I needed to hear. Um, also later on when I was kind of struggling um, and trying to figure out where I wanted to go, what the next steps were after my postdoc, um, continuing to kind of want to stay in doing the work I was doing, um, you just told me, well, why don't you email um, Marty Abeloff, who was then chair of the Cancer Center, and you know, ended up being, that's been my home for quite a while now. So really appreciative of kind of all the guidance you've provided with me. Um, and over the past, you know, 15 years, I've had the pleasure of teaching with you. Um, 
you know, whether it's benefiting from slides you've given me when I first took over the linkage course to the past couple of years, co-teaching the course with you has been really valuable. I continue to learn from you. Um, one of the best parts about teaching with you is continuing to be able to learn with you from you and be part of the class discussions and see not only um, your great knowledge of genetic epidemiology, but also um, your wonderful uh, expertise in guiding and mentoring students. I'm really so fortunate. Um, and while I wish you the very best um, on retirement, great adventures um, with your family, um, I really hope we stay in touch and I can continue to uh, benefit from your advice. Um, you may not recall, but the whole reason I came to Hopkins started with a chance encounter between you and me in Cleveland when you were doing a site visit for Case Western's T32, I believe. And Jane Olson introduced us and you said, when are you graduating? Want to come down and do an interview? And I said, sure. And from that moment on, I came to Hopkins. I got the opportunity to be in genetic epidemiology and I've been at Hopkins for 21 years at this point, all due to you. So you've had a huge uh, part in shaping my life and I'm really grateful. And things I've learned from you are a very long list, but I um, will say that one thing you always said to me was, you can't get a grant if you don't write it. And your point was to just keep writing them and see what happens, and that's been great advice. I also learned from you to try to work with everyone, to figure out how to navigate different types of people and to figure out how to get students you know, engaged in producing, how to work with collaborators um, in all kinds of ways. And I've always admired that about you, that you were able to work with so many different types of folks. Um, I am grateful for all the opportunities you gave me over the years and for the friendship that we developed. And I look forward to the next chapters of your life. Congratulations. Hi, Teddy. I hear that you are going to take retirement, at least partially. I wanted to really share what a contribution you have had on my career. I do not know if you remember, around 2000, I took a course in summer course in genetic epidemiology when I was at the National Cancer Institute as a postdoctoral fellow. I drove down to Baltimore to attend your course together with Kangi. And that was my first introduction to genetic epi. And, and, and it had a huge influence on me to pursue a research career in that direction. And, and so it was a distinct honor for me when around after two, around 2015 or 16, we started actually co-teaching the genetic AP sequence uh, in our sc school. And during that time, I learned how, what a dedicated teacher you are. It doesn't matter how like busy you are doing, writing amazing papers and getting grants, you always made sure that teaching is at the highest standard and you always reminded us about that. So this is a lesson I will never forget. And I wanted to wish a very happy retirement and, and thank you for all the things we have done for Genetic AP at Hopkins, which has impact at the school and much beyond. Hi, Terry, this is Gloria. I, it has been a long time, but I wanted to add my congratulations to those of others as you near your retirement, your very slow road to retirement. I know that you are a very hard worker and it is hard to stop working when you love your science so much. I really appreciate the time we shared together as faculty in human genetics in the department. Um, I learned so much from you. You are a fabulous role model for me and you taught me so much about the importance of uh, teaching and mentoring uh, graduate students and you were so um, generous in sharing your materials with me to enable me to succeed at uh, Hopkins and I very much appreciate everything you've done. I really, really wish you well. It has been a long time but we will, I hope, cross paths someday soon. Thank you. Hi Terry and colleagues and friends. It's hard to believe it's been almost 10 years since I first met you, Terry, um, when I was just a postdoc coming into the field of public health. I'm not really sure why, but initially I was really scared to approach Terry. But the more I got to know her and as I transitioned to faculty, um, I found out what a really dedicated mentor um, and what an amazing track record in science she had, as well as um, teaching and courses. 
And I found myself reaching out to her and seeking her um, guidance, both in terms of research and career. And so I wanted to share with you just a couple of examples um, of some of the times we shared together that will stay with me um, for many, many years. And I think highlight some of Terry's strong collaborative spirit, um, how quick she is to respond to things um, and take initiative, and really her dedication to um, family. And so the first example I wanted to give you is this little girl here. So mm -hmm. aside from my husband and son, Terry was the first person to come and meet my daughter, um, Isabella, after she was born. And I couldn't believe how quickly she arrived um, to visit with Isabella. And now in hindsight, I think, you know, that's how Terry does lots of things at work and in life is she does not procrastinate and she just um, does everything right in the moment and lives in the moment. And so I'll always remember you, um, Terry, coming to see her in your huge smile um, in love for those 10 tiny fingers and toes um, for many years to come. Yep. Hi, Terry. Um, honestly, I didn't think that this day is going to come so soon. Um, I'm really not prepared to not see you in office. Um, and, and I think what I'm going to miss most about you not being in office or you retiring is that um, my ability to just go to your office just next door, knock on the door, and be able to share with you any idea that I have or any suggestion that I need about collaboration or even just vent out my frustration for the day. Um, and uh, the memory, uh, my favorite memory with you is um, the first time that my grant got funded. And so you and I hugged and jumped like two little girls. Well, almost jumped. Um, so that, that, that's something that I'll remember my life. And uh, I've learned many important lessons. Um, one being, you know, uh, to not be affected by anything. So basically um, a phrase that you keep using, water of ducks back. Uh, I am trying to remember that in every you know everything i do and that also brings me to to a quote that you often use which is you know that we are all in the same boat um anyway so these are some of my favorite things about you and while i'm very excited that you are going to your next phase that you i hope that you enjoy it to the fullest the, this retired phase but worry not i'm still going to work this is my short video for Terry on the occasion of her, her celebration. Um, I wanted to say congrats on your retirement um, and really um, to show appreciation for all that you have done um, over the course of your career for both the field and your students. You know, I, I think I speak for a lot of us when I say that you've been a constant in our lives as we go through the academic sort of journey. Um, this is a constant source of inspiration, a constant source of encouragement. Um, and the general support uh, for all of us. It has been an honor and a pleasure to be uh, your student, starting with um, an academic granddaughter as the former advisee of a former advisee. Um, and now as your colleague, it really is an honor um, and great fun. You know, I, I think that we, you know, I, I'm sure I'm the only one to say this, but what I most admire about Terry is the, the just the, endless generosity towards colleagues, towards trainees. Um, there is, you know, the advice that's given is, is really grounded in experience, but also it's sort of anchored in the idea that we all know that you genuinely do care about us and want what's best for us, um, which is really meaningful and also, I think, a valuable and rare thing uh, in, in this field. And so once again, I'm going to wrap this up saying congratulations on your retirement um, and also, you know, just to show appreciation. Thank you for having such a meaningfully meaningful career um, with a lasting legacy, both through your research and work, but also through your trainees. Um, so thank you. Hi, Terry. It's an honor to be able to congratulate you on your retirement. I just published a paper on Victor McCusick's legacy in honor of his 100th birthday. Fortunately, your department did not wait until then, for both our sakes. 
Um, I've also been cleaning up my office lately, something one should do every few decades. And I noticed how many papers we've been on together, most of which I probably didn't warrant uh, co-authorship on. It's also been interesting to look back on the arc of methods and technologies that we've used over the years, from uh, looking at single variants and single genes to the sequencing of all the genes and everything in between with whole genomes. I hope it is very satisfying to you to have made so much headway in understanding the genetics of cleft lip and palate. I know I am happy to have contributed in my own small way. Now the next generation has to do the hard work of figuring out what it all means and finding ways to prevent these and other birth defects. So let me end by wishing you a long and healthy retirement. It's been a great ride. Thank you for everything. Hi, Terry. I can't believe I'm making this, I'm contributing to this tribute for your retirement. We've known each other pretty much forever since we started out in human genetics, pretty much before human genetics was much of a field. There were very few people involved. But when we first met, you and I hit it off immediately, cemented in part by our shared interest in the genetics of cleft lip and cleft palate. So since we met, it's been many years now, I hate to even count up how many years it's been, but we've had very successful collaborations, again, primarily in cleft lip and cleft palate. We've lived through the Human Genome Project, which provided incredible tools for us to use for our collaborations, and have learned many new acronyms through all those years. GWAS, Geneva, WES, WGS, GMKF, NIH, NADCR, and many more. Your leadership has led to incredible results and progress in understanding how the face develops. And you are truly one of the giants in that field. And it's been an honor to know you. In addition to, um, in addition to what I've learned from you in general in human genetics, we've worked together on a large number of projects, have had about 50 publications, and your contribution to our projects and those publications is legendary. In particular, you are the member of the team who keeps us all using appropriate statistical methods, using correct and careful interpretation of our genetic results, and notably, paying close attention to our grammar. Thank you for all those contributions. As we are now, as you're now sort of winding down, it's interesting to note that we've submitted a grant together just last month. So it's weird to think that might be the last grant we submit together, but uh, never say never. Terry, enjoy your retirement. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with you through all these years. You're one of my most valued colleagues, collaborators, and friends and I look forward to see what you do and accomplish in this next phase. Best regards. This is Alexa. Just wanna say it's been a pleasure to know you all these years in, in more than one of my worlds. And uh, even though sometimes it got confusing when the worlds overlapped, I do remember uh, the first time we ran into each other at Epworth both of us, I think, very confused about who is this person that looks familiar, but not in this setting. And yet I've known you in several different settings and you always had a calm and sensible word, whether it was discussing uh, genetics, statistics, theology, novels, whatever. And I just wish you the best in the next chapter of your life and hope you will find new fun things to do. Hello, Terry. It's been a pleasure to be your colleague in the epidemiology department. I've always uh, regarded you as someone with a lot of common sense, a deep knowledge, and a great colleague. So I remember that uh, many years ago, I asked about wanted to learn a little bit more about genetics and immediately you gave me a whole textbook 
Uh, so, you know, he's, in addition to being a great uh, genetic epidemiologist, uh, you're also a very generous person. So, uh, incredible combination of common sense, depth of knowledge, and modesty. So, I wish you all the best in your new endeavors. Uh, take care of yourself. Have a nice uh, life uh, of retirement. Um, I understand you spent so many years at Johns Hopkins University. And although I was not a student of yours, but I felt like I was, because you taught me so much, and that including how to be a young professor or a middle-aged professor, I learned a lot from you. Not only the knowledge part, but also how you deal with conflicts, difficulties, and your patience, and your level of intelligence. I was so fortunate to be there for a few years and help mentor a few excellent students. And they are at different places, doing different things. I feel very proud of them. And, and knowing you, even though you might be thinking about retirement, but I think you probably still will be doing something related to science. And, but I also know that you enjoy reading novels and watching TVs and detective movies. I feel so happy for you. Again, I also want to thank you in terms of your way of teaching your kids. And we speak to each other from time to time. And it's inspiring after I talk to you and I learn a new way to educate my daughter. Um, I'm so proud of you as a woman scientist, a woman professor, your manner, your patience, your honesty. My name is Ed Silverman and I'm honored to be able to contribute to this video celebrating Terry Beatty's career. Although I'd been aware of Terry's research for many years, I didn't start working closely with, with her until about 15 years ago when we began planning the COPD gene study together. During the many years collaborating with Terry on the COPD Gene Executive Committee and Genetic Analysis Center, I found that working with Terry has been an absolute joy. Terry's been a wonderful collaborator. She is humble, brilliant, and thoughtful. She's provided superb leadership to the COPD Gene Genetic Analysis Center, always working to develop and empower junior investigators. Even in areas outside of her primary expertise, Terry's been able to provide insightful guidance to the COPD Gene Executive Committee. I've been especially impressed by Terry's dedication to her students, postdoctoral trainees, and staff. She's an outstanding mentor who's able to achieve the critical essential balance between providing autonomy and directed guidance for her trainees. One of my favorite Terry Beatty comments occurred during one of our COPD Gene meetings when there was discussion about the plans for an upcoming publication. The investigators were arguing whether they should delay publication in order to obtain more data to have a higher impact paper. Terry noted that the NIH did not give us funding to make us famous. They gave us funding to advance science. We should get these results out to the scientific community as soon as possible. I've learned a great deal from working with Terry, which has made me a better scientist and a better mentor. I'm extremely grateful that I've been able to work closely with Terry, and I wish her only the best in the future. Hi, Terry. Wishing you all the best as you move toward retirement. You've been an important person in my world while I've been at, at the School of Public Health. In fact, you helped recruit me to the school. You went to Pat Walsh and talked to him about, uh, about me as a postdoctoral fellow. That was very, very helpful for me. And of course, my career flourished in part because of, of that connection that uh, you provided for me. You also have helped me so many times over the years with the T32. and gave me lots of advice to keep that moving forward. I enjoyed all the conversations that we've had over the years, and I wish you all the best as you move toward retirement. Hi, Terry. I was so lucky that I got to spend the first 10 years of my independent career working with you. Um, you've been such an amazing colleague, mentor, and friend during that time. I think the two most important professional things I learned from you are first, the value of strong collaborative relationships. You are really amazing at making connections between people, 
that are working on similar things that often lead to highly successful collaborative projects that really push our science forward. And I feel like you do this by engaging personally with people, showing your curiosity and interest and your personality to them in a way that makes them feel open and welcomed to the project. Um, the second thing that I feel I've learned from you is the importance of finishing things. You are always very good at reminding us that it's only um, done when we've actually written it up and submitted it to paper. So I really appreciate how you have so much faith in all the people that you work with and those around you. You never give up on anyone and you offer your support and encouragement to countless mentees and colleagues um, all the time. So. I hope that I'll be able to learn from your tradition and continue to um, uh, give my best and expect the best from the people around me in this really open way that you have. I really miss you and I hope you have a wonderful retirement. Hi right, Terry. I just wanted to say what an honor and pleasure it has been to work with you and to thank you for your guidance, wisdom, kindness, and one of my personal favorites, getting a manuscript back with really detailed comments. Um, I hope we can continue to work with you during your semi-retirement, um, and just thank you. Hi Terry, it's hard to believe we've known each other for almost 20 years at this point. You've been a collaborator, teacher, mentor, and friend, and I appreciate all of those aspects of our relationship. One of the things I remember most is sitting in Blaylock 1024 with you and Alan looking at heat maps of cleft lip associations and snips with you. After one of those meetings, Alan looked at me and said, one of us needs to understand that stuff, and I have my PhD, so you should go get your degree. You found a way to enable me to do a full-time master's program, part-time, <laughs> work, and be a mom, even when I'm bringing my kids to class with me. I will always appreciate that. I also remember you critiquing my papers with the comment, you always think it comes down to sequencing. And I would respond, it's the only way you will know for certain. I guess neither of us really had any idea how complicated the world of genomics really is and that neither of us was really right. <laughs> but fortunately for me, I guess, sequencing has continued to be important. Thank you for the impact you've had on my life and in the lives of many others whom I've had the pleasure of continuing to work with. I hope you have many years to do all of the things you enjoy doing in your life outside of JHU. Thank you. Hi Terry, this is Pat from Michigan. First, I want to thank you for your amazing contributions to genetic epidemiology, starting with your thesis, your landmark book, hundreds of scientific papers, many chapters in reviews. But most importantly, you have trained so many of the next generation of genetic epidemiologists that your impact on the field will be felt for decades. On a more personal note, you are an incredible daughter, daughter-in-law, sister, mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, aunt, great aunt, and friend. You're kind, you're compassionate, and above all else, you are just such a supportive person. To my special friend and colleague, thank you for being in my life for more than 40 years. In the coming years, I wish you sunshine, lots of family time, fun travels, and good health. Okay, so what is an important lesson that I've learned from Dr. Beatty? Um, I've learned many great lessons from her, but one that I think of often is that while of course it's important for us to do you know, good and impactful science, um, it's also important to remember that life is short um, and you know, it's important to foster collaborations with people that you enjoy working with. And that's kind of a straightforward message, but uh, one that was really good for, for me to hear and for me to learn. And it's something that I think of frequently. Um, and I think it's uh, made my work better and um, I've been happier for it. And so I'm grateful for that lesson. Um, what do I admire about her? I admire many things. She's a terrific scientist. She's had a great career. Um, the thing I think I admire most is her mentorship. 
She mentors um, so many people from our earliest of trainees all the way up through faculty members. Uh, she's this rare combination um, of kind and thoughtful and you know she definitely listens to you but beyond that um, you know she's very smart and wise and she's honest um, and, and she will tell you what you need to hear um, and I'm really grateful that I've benefited from her mentorship. She's generous with her time. She's a type of mentor who will seek you out and make sure that you're still doing okay um, and I, I'm so grateful to have had that from her and it's, um, you know, I hope I can be that kind of mentor for other people um, in my own career. So, thank you. Hey Terry! Yeah, retirement my foot. You know, you're still on our last, our one submission and I bet you anything I'll catch you on some study section down the road. So, here's hope that uh, always being behind comes to an end with Professor Emeritus. Terry, all the best. It is a great pleasure for me to recognize the great career that Dr. Terry Beatty has had in science in such a special moment of her life. Dr. Beatty is an inspirational person, scientist, and friend. I'm very thankful for the time and effort that she spent in helping us getting started in the genetic studies of infectious disease in adult Brazil. Terry taught me many things in science to me, but also the importance of following closely our mentees to allow them to thrive. Terry, thank you for all the lessons and I hope you the best in this new phase of your life. And I'm sure the Natal group will continue to count on you. So not really a total retirement. Thank you very much and good luck in this new phase. I'm thrilled for you. Uh, this is a wonderful next step and you get to enjoy it with your family um, and doing the things you wanna do. Uh, the questions are, what's an important lesson I've learned? And you know what? Sometimes the customer isn't always correct and that's okay and we help them get there. Um, and so that's something that um, yeah, we've learned over the years. And what do I admire most um, is your sense of fairness, equity, um, and your um, your sense of humor. So thank you very much. And um, I really have enjoyed working with you over these past however many years. Dear Dr. Beattie, it's been a while now, but I clearly remember starting my PhD at Hopkins, not speaking English really well yet, coming from Quebec. I was so impressed I got to take a course taught by the author of the textbook that got me interested in genetic epidemiology. After my studies and working for a while in the field, I admire you even more. I admire your breadth of knowledge. I admire your dedication to, to your work to the field of genetic epidemiology and to your trainees. I learned a lot from you, but what I take with, I keep with me the most is to value teaching and mentoring the next generation of genetic epidemiologists. Thank you for contributing greatly to my education. And you've left a great contribution to the field. Happy retirement. Hello, Terry. We all know your contributions to science are enormous, but I'm here on behalf of your enormous contributions to the next generation of epidemiology leaders, uh, particularly in genetic epi. So on behalf of epidemiology's academic mission, heartfelt thanks for your outstanding contributions to education and mentorship. I have especially learned from you the art of perseverance, and processes for helping every single student reach their goals. We all got together and want to award you this special gold star award. Epi Academic. Dubs you our No Nonsense Mountain Mover Award. Thank you, Terry, the field is forever better for your contributions. Terry is retiring? That's hard to believe. I've heard about this for years. Is this a prank? 
Still expecting to see Terry in her office when I return to Hopkins from Australia post COVID. Uh, still need to ask her to sign her textbook, which I bought after leaving Baltimore. It's a strange Terry nostalgia. You just can't explain it. Thank you, Terry. Hi, Terry. Ben Rebicki. Just want to wish you a happy, enjoyable, long retirement. And I want to thank you for your contributions throughout the years, and particularly to your, your students, many grateful students of which I am one. Uh, you were instrumental in uh, helping me decide to come to Hopkins in the mid 80s. I was entering in different graduate schools I to see that it was a, definitely a nurturing and caring environment at Hopkins that I wanted to be a part of. Um, I came there initially, uh, Bernice Cohen was my main academic advisor and remain so uh, throughout my two plus years there but you were really the go-to person the person that um, I depended on to help formulate the idea for my dissertation to help, help think about what I want to write what I want to analyze the data provided the data set it really just introduced me to the field of genetic epidemiology which I didn't know existed before I came to Hopkins and give me a, a passion for doing that work throughout the course of my career. Um, and even after I left Hopkins, you were a key person to help me make connections to, to my next step in uh, graduate school at University of Michigan, where I was able to complete my studies, make a connection with Pat Pizer. So I'm really grateful for everything you've done for me throughout the years, and I want to wish you all the best. Happy long retirement. God bless. Hi, Terry. I can't believe you're finally retiring. I never thought this day would happen. I just want to thank you for everything that you did for me when I was your graduate student. You taught me so much. You taught me a passion for science and for statistics and for asking questions the right way and learning how to answer them the right way. You taught me how to do science with integrity and never giving up on integrity and making sure that that's the number one thing. So I just can't thank you enough for turning me into the biostatistician, epidemiologist, and scientist that I am today. I've been the PI of a number of studies, and right now I'm leading a study of international world-renowned allergists. I never anticipated being in this position, and it's all because of you and what you taught me in guiding me down the right path. Good luck with retirement. I hope you do lots of fun things, and you go out and see the world, and you have a blast. You've changed a lot of lives. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Congratulations. Today, I want to share something happened in the spring of 2011. I got several PhD study offers at that time, and uh, I remember it was an afternoon we came to the lab, and we talked about that. I, I told you it is a very hard choice to make, and there are always good and bad points for those universities. We have talked a lot that afternoon, and I cannot tell more details about our conversation, but I still remember that you told me it is always very important to follow your heart. So your words actually make the difficult choices much easier. So this year is the 10th year I graduated from Johns Hopkins. Uh, after my graduation, I got married and had the, the first kid and the second kid. I got my PhD degree from WashU and uh, I got an academic position in university back to China. So every time when I need to make a big choice in my life, I remember your choice as well. One thing Terry taught me is that she, as an advisor, could see potential in each one of her students. Genetic epidemiology was new to me in 1994. A program like SAGE for segregation analysis was daunting to use. The biostatistics involved in my PhD dissertation could have overwhelmed me, but Terry advised me to collaborate with biostatisticians, teach them my genetic epidemiology so they could teach me the much needed biostatistics. I survived and continued to use her mentoring style with my own students. Happy retirement, Terry. You end it. My name is Diego Wisinski. I live in London, England, and I graduated from the Johns Hopkins School of Hygiene and Public Health 
with a Master's of Health Science in Epidemiology degree in 1992 and with a PhD in Epidemiology in 1996. Terry was my advisor for my PhD and I was her research assistant until I graduated. We published together several papers in the areas of birth defects and genetic epidemiology. I learned many valuable lessons from Terry. One that I keep repeating to friends and colleagues is as follows. When I was doing my PhD, I thought I could also do a master's in biostatistics. This sounded like a great and ambitious plan. Could I complete two degrees in two separate disciplines? So I went to Terry, my advisor, and I asked her for her opinion. She looked at me with her stern face. She looked at my eyes and said very clearly to me, Diego, you can be good at one thing or mediocre at two things. It is your choice. Needless to say, I decided to only pursue the degree in epidemiology. How many times have we faced the temptation to multitask, to do more things that we are qualified to do? I learned from Terry to stop, to think, and to calibrate. For this and for many other lessons in epidemiology and in life, I will always be grateful to my professor and advisor, Terry Bailey. I met Terry on my very first day as a public health student at Hopkins. I remember she gave the intro to genetic epi lecture and I didn't know then she was later going to adopt me as a mentee during my PhD. We've shared so many special moments together, especially during our meetings with her great sense of humor and sarcasm. But my most favorite thing about Terry is that she has always been my staunchest supporter during the program and beyond. I can't imagine the Department of Epi, let alone Genetic Epi, without Terry. So happy retirement, Terry. Thank you for always being in my corner. Dear Dr. Bailey, dear Terry, this is Bart Kimenei from the Netherlands. I was a visiting scientist in your group in the early 90s. I don't think I was one of the best students, but for me, it was wonderful. It gave a boost to my career and I had really a wonderful time together with my wife and my children in Baltimore. I don't think I have ever seen a, a nicer group leader as, as you were. So thank you very much for the change that you made in my life and enjoy your retirement. Best of luck. Bye bye. Hello, my name is Shi Zhenhua. Today I want to share with you some only some of the inspiration and the influence I had received uh, while working with Terry. After knowing my personal profound interest to study um, to identify uh, impact of gene one interaction for human diseases, Terry went to extend uh, lens to gather to collect the resource and support for me to focus on my dissertation. I was extremely lucky to get to um, have a um, personal uh, in-depth uh, learning and experience to work in the lab to have a uh, laboratory-oriented genetic investigation experience. Um, in addition, I also have all the um, statistical facility and support uh, so Terry's help. Um, Terry has extended her support uh, not only inside the Hopkins campus but outside the campus. I was very lucky to get to collect a bus bar sample myself in the state health department. So all this adventure and learning experience um, to um, solve my personal curiosity about what is gene involvement interaction? I receive a tremendous kindness, life, lifetime friendship, and a support and a suggestion from all the resources uh, Terry has uh, helped and had provided for me. Hi, Terry. This is Lawrence, spoken from Taiwan. Actually, um, first stuff comes to my mind 
is time flies. I always kept the scene in my mind to listen to your lectures on genetic epidemiology. That is really working for me until now. I remember you spent so much time to help me to finish my dissertation, so that I finally got my PhD degree. The time to be with you will occupy an important part of my life. All I want to say is, in one sentence, thank you very much, and keep healthy and happy. Zhou Hong in Taiwan, and we are still fighting with COVID nineteen. Thank you. Hi, Doctor B D. Long time no see. It's so great that I can talk to you in this special way during such a difficult time. In this very moment, I am missing you, my friends and colleagues in Hopkins, very much. You taught me a lot. What you told me becomes what I'm telling my students now. Thank you very much for what you、uh, you have been doing for me, not just during my study in Hopkins. But also after my graduation, your support is very, very important to my career. As you know, I have been working hard on the genetic epidemiology of viral collapse in China.、Uh, I have been collaborating with colleagues at Peking University School of Stomatology, Dr. Liang Ma's team, as your suggestion. My students and I also took part in several charity missions of our collapse in China. I am also working on several family-based studies. My team established a family-based cohort in Fujian Province. It's in a very interesting area, where people with a one family name they usually live in a round, very big,、um, round shape. Uh, building uh, usually four to five story. I hope you can visit it in the future. I hope you can have more free time for yourself. Enjoy the new life that you are going to have. I wish I could see you in person in the near future. Take care. Bye. Hi, Terry. Congratulations on your retirement. It's very exciting. Can't wait to hear. If it sticks, and if you,、uh, what sorts of things you、um, tackle in your retirement,、um, this video is certainly a wonderful testament to the tremendous impact you've had, and、um, really grateful that I was a part of that. Terry Beatty was my doctoral advisor, but before that, to me, she was Dr. Beatty. That is until the day she said to me. Quit using doctor, and、um, I can just say that she really likes to keep things real, and I respect that. Sometimes, when things are getting difficult and I'm writing a grant, I might tell myself, "You know what? The only way to make sure that you won't get this grant is to not apply for it." And that's actually straight from Terry. As a doctoral student. My project involved getting data from the field in Brazil. So she told me that、um, I should get involved in a project where 80% of the data is already collected, and I contribute 20%.、Um, so I went to Brazil, and then I discovered that there was very little there that I could actually use. Terry responded very calmly to my frantic emails, and from then on, she helped me obtain some funds, overcome numerous obstacles, and she was there when I put one foot in front of another. She had my back, and I made it. So I want to say thank you so much for everything that you did for me, for your encouragement both when I was a student and beyond, and I want to wish you a very happy, joyful. And especially relaxing retirement. Hello, Terry. This is Hank from Taiwan. I would like to express my gratitude for taking me to the field 
of genetic epidemiology. I remember you spent three months to read my first paper, which was written in Chinese English. You tried to convert it into a comprehensible article. I guess you probably don't need to worry about such a situation in the future since you are not taking students anymore. Again, I would like to appreciate uh, for your kindness, patience, guidance, and the mentoring. Enjoy your new life. We always remember you. Hi, Terry. Um, I'm so glad to participate in this tribute to you and to really congratulate you on your upcoming retirement. I just wanted to say a few words about your mentorship. Um, as you know, you're my advisor for my master's and also my PhD. And in addition to that, I worked for you in between my master's and PhD. And I really learned so much over those six years in Baltimore that have made me the researcher and also the person I am today. And you are always so good at, at pushing me and pushing our projects forward, as well as facilitating connections to so many other great colleagues and great mentors, including helping me get my postdoc in Boston and also um, helping me to get the job and career I have today. And you've been such an amazing role model and really paved the path to work in the field of genetic epi. Um, it's been so great to work with you. And I just wanted to say congratulations again on your retirement and say thank you for your mentorship again over the years and also for your continued mentorship today. You definitely deserve to enjoy some time off, so I hope you do. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Betty. It's me, Moad, from MPH class of 2015. I still remember how you were helping me to finish my capstone project during the days before the submission deadline. Because it took me too long to find an interrelated project, I was in a race against time to submit uh, my capstone before the deadline. I remember you asking me to send you every two paragraphs I write for you to edit while I keep writing the next set of paragraphs. And your plan worked and we submitted the capstone before even the deadline. I also remember you making time to attend my capstone presentation and meeting my family on FaceTime afterward. I'm sending you this video to say thank you again to what you've done for me and the positive impact you made on so many other students. After the MPH, I moved to get my doctorate uh, in dental public health from Harvard School of Dental Medicine. And currently, I'm an assistant professor at King Saud University here in Saudi Arabia, as you can tell. You are an example of what I want to be as a mentor. Your accommodation of students' interests your guidance and your kindness. I will try to pay forward the lessons that I learned from you. And thank you again. Um, one important lesson that I learned from, uh, from Terry uh, is to never lose the focus of your research, research question. Um, I think this is something very important, especially when you are young uh, or young researcher. <laughs> um, but this is something that obviously you gain over the, over the years, and I think it's a, it's a very important lesson. Um, in terms of memories, there are many good memories uh, from Terry, especially when you, you spend time with her in classes. And um, I always remember her sense of humor. Uh, she, she looked serious, but she was, she was very funny. <laughs> Dr. Beatty was one of the first people I spoke to at Hopkins, and I spoke with her on the phone before submitting my application. I have learned so much from her since then, from journal clubs and classes to very helpful and insightful comments during research and progress. She has this amazing ability to hone in on the study design for any paper, which is something that I will definitely take away in my work here and also afterwards. I always have learned to ask questions about who made it into the study, who didn't, is it appropriate to compare the groups and questions, things like that, um, specifically because of what Terry has taught me. And I've referenced her textbook many times when I've TA'd Genetic Epi, and I am so grateful to have been in this department and track while she was here. And. One of my favorite Terry Beatty quotes is, and I think it was during a journal club, where she said something along the lines of, 
I don't trust p-values that are larger in magnitude than Avogadro's number, or the number of particles in a mole. And yeah, that just made me smile and continues to make me smile. So thank you, Terry, so much for everything you have taught me. I am incredibly grateful. Hi, Terry. A huge congratulations. Um, ever since I came to Hopkins, um, you've been so incredibly supportive, welcoming, and warm. Um, it's been such a privilege and joy to have you as a, as a teacher. Um, and colleague and to learn from you, whether it's in journal club, in class, or even attending different conferences. Um, thank you so much for all of your support these last few years. Hi, I'm Saumya. Dr. BT was my first advisor here at Hopkins. Approaching her for help during my first year led to a very fortunate turn of events and without Dr. BT, I would not be here today. She has guided me not only in my career, but has given me excellent life advice. I, I really admire her passion for genetics and her curiosity to learn new things. I find it very aspirational that she has retained her love for genetics after so many years. I chose this bad drop of a Manhattan plot because I thought it would be funny. And I think that one of the things I did learn from Dr. Beatty is that Manhattan plots don't always look like this but that is okay. Um, so I wish Dr. Beatty all the best in her future endeavors. And I feel lucky to be a part of one of the lives that she has touched. Congratulations, Dr. Beatty. I just wanted to thank you for all that you've done for me. When I first started at Johns Hopkins, I knew very little about epidemiology and even less about genetics. Despite that, you kept me on your team and uh, kept my projects moving forward. You really cared about our goals and aspirations and encouraged us to find mentors to help us achieve them, and I found that to be extremely meaningful. In fact, later in life, several years later, when we, when we reconnected, you told me, this is not a dress rehearsal, this is life, and I actually shared that with my wife, and we were thinking about it, and you were completely right. There are no redos. We might as well enjoy the ups and downs, treat it as part of the adventure, and have as much fun along the way. And uh, that is kind of how we've taken our approach as we try to navigate adulthood. I hope you enjoy your retirement and have as much fun along the way. Hi, Terry. Hi, this is Yanzi, and this is my cat, Angus. We just want to wish you a big congratulations on your retirement and happy retirement. And I really wanted to thank you um, for being my advisor for all of these years since when I was a master's student back in 2013, and that was a long time ago. Uh, I think I'm really lucky to have you as my advisor. I learned a lot from you throughout the years, and I hope um, that you know one can only ask for such a good advisor. Um, the most important lesson I learned from you, as, um, aside from like the genetic epi teachings and science, um, is that grammar is really important. Um, so I always remember that, like, always make sure to check your grammar, my grammar, before sending anything to Terry. <laughs> Hi, Terry. This is Mandy. I'm in China. Um, I've been so fortunate to have your guidance and uh, encouragement during my training at Hopkins. I hope you'll have a wonderful retirement. Terry was my advisor during the four and a half years of my doctoral program. In our very first meeting, she warned me that research interest usually wanes, Especially for doctoral students, it tends to dissipate by the time we defend. I brushed it off thinking, you know, that would never happen to me. But by God, was she right. Terry taught me to stay relevant to my research make small and reasonable targets to make long-term goals attainable and maintain a driving force uh, for new scientific um, questions. She always kept me on track, be it my health, analysis, or writing papers. Terry, I earnestly want to thank you for showing me immense patience and constant encouragement throughout these years. I would not have made it through this doctoral program had it not been for you. Thank you. I admire her ability in teaching and training students. 
As a doctoral student when I was in Hopkins, um, she cared a lot about my research and heard deeply about the research idea that I brought up. And she was open to any kinds of questions. And if there's an issue or something needs to be discussed, she always made a time for me. And she truly cared and provided the feedback um, that helped me to move forward the research. And I feel really grateful about the time uh, when I listened to her uh, many research experiences in the academia, as well as learned about the knowledge. So she always supported uh, my research and my doctoral program and further uh, my career development. So she was a really great teacher to me. And thank you so much, Terry, and congratulations on your retirement. Hey, my dearest Terry, this was 33 years ago. Could you imagine this scene has always come to my mind just like yesterday? Little Barrett was showing me what is what on a sailboat, which was totally new to me. And Big Brother Ben was looking out for other racing boats. Now you can remember who I am, your first few students at Hopkins. Yes, I'm Ping. I'm now in Scottsdale, Arizona, one of Mayo Clinic's campuses. Knowing you're retiring, please remember, come to Arizona, visit us. Love you, Ping. Hi, Terry couple of the things that you've taught me over the years. The first is the difference between port and starboard. Always comes in handy in a port town. The second is that you really can have a personal life and a career. It just takes kids to make it happen. I admire your quiet confidence and humility, two things that are not often found in an academician of a prestigious university. But what I cherish most is our friendship. Congratulations, Terry, not only to your contributions to the field of genetic epidemiology, but also on the next phase of your life. Cheers. Hi, Terry. Here we are at the end of your Hopkins career, and I've experienced over 30 years there along with you. Mostly, you are pretty serious, but with a little bit of dry humor thrown in. This won't be too serious or nostalgic though because a new chapter is beginning and it should be full of joy and many laughs. So I'll start off your retirement with a toast. Roses are red, violets are blue. When you retire from JHU, you won't die at your computer. <laughs> Congratulations on a wonderful career and to many more years filled with new adventures. <laughs>